Welcome back to the Florida CV Group here in Chicago, Thursday, April 26th. I'm Killer, I'm with the Wolfman. Wolfman, what's shaking, brother? Not a whole lot. It's been really crazy all around the floor I heard today. Yeah. Even in the uh, financial room and all the way over to here. I mean, we're down in the air pretty big after being up early this morning. Folks, we're seeing a lot of markets move. There's a big buzz in the pits behind us. Ben Bernanke came out yesterday, and we're still trying, as traders, we're still trying to get acclimated to how this new format is released, because initially, they released a text. Yep. And all of a sudden, it was like, ah, it's pretty unmuted, no change. They hit bonds, they crushed gold, yeah. and all of a sudden, Ben started talking about an hour later, and booyah, in the words of Jim Cramer, this thing came back, yep. bonds came back, the five year actually went positive. We saw that 1625 print in gold. Now now, today we're up at 1660, right. but they came and ran the ladder of all the shorts who were putting initial shorts in there due to the fact that maybe there's not going to be more QE. We saw it at 1640 print. It was a massive volatile trade. What did you see when you saw that second release from Ben Bernanke come out? Well, right. Yeah, you know, they, they're kind of trying to be real open with all of this. We used to never get Bernanke or the Fed head right. speaking right after the FOMC, which is kind of nice to get that. You know, you don't really. You don't get a three-dimensional look at it when you're looking at the text and stuff Great like point. that. So it's nice to hear him talk. But one thing that I found interesting was, you know, we've kind of talked here and there back and forth about what exceptionally ro low rates means mm -hmm. by the Fed. Now that really could be one, one and a half percent. That is historically an exceptionally low rate. And True. we're starting to see some of the Fed governors start to vote for that. Now, some people were bantering back and forth whether or not that meant they were being more hawkish. I don't really know that that's what that means. I think that it just means that they're thinking rates probably could be ratcheted up a little bit and that still is extremely accommodating. No, that's a great point, Wolfman. I really think, folks, that the Fed, just like us and the folks behind us here in these pits, we're all looking at the data in the same way. We're kind of on hold. We've seen the ECB do their mass amount of easing via the LTRO. We're kind of just waiting and holding. I know tomorrow's GDP, but honestly, folks, I kind of view that as a rear view, look at a Q1. The Fed's not looking at Q1, they're looking at Q2, Q3. And the Correct. jobless claims say 388. Do the math, folks, 388. That's closer to 400 than it is 350. Yeah. I tweeted that out this morning. They, it's they, true. they ratcheted up the revisions also a little bit, too. So, I mean, th these jobless claim numbers are really becoming disconcerting to me, I mean. For sure, and I think the, the focus of the Fed, obviously, the dual mandate, but they're talking about this an un unemployment number, and it's kind of convoluted. We talked about this on the CMZ before, but they have to do something here, but right now, Ben Bernanke is gonna lay in the weeds and continue to see the European situation. What else are you looking at to develop? What would make Ben Bernanke come out and pull that trigger? To do more quantitative easing? Yes. I think if we start seeing these uh, numbers start to slip, we saw the manufacturing numbers are all coming out a little bit worse than expected. We got the Chicago Fed that came out a little bit worse mm -hmm. than expected. I mean, these numbers are starting to soften a little bit. Um, like you said, GDP, uh, you know, looking in the rear view mirror. Sure. So where are all these economic uh, earnings numbers that we're getting, you know, or not economic, but the earnings numbers we're getting from all these co uh, companies, that's all from Q Q1. Sure. It's not really telling us what's happening now and what's going forward. And I'm starting to see a little bit of a pullback. We're seeing inventories rise, manufacturing cut back. Uh, you know, the hiring is not out there. It's just, yeah. I don't know, I'm, I'm getting a little nervous. And one interesting thing I've been looking at Wolfman is the correlation Apple. Apple, Apple, Apple. We talk about Apple all the time, and it really is the gorilla in the room. And everyone was kind of hedging, you know, when you saw that price, and Dr. J's done a tremendous job of scalping this from, you know, that 610 level yeah, all the way into 570. He's dominated the market, so kudos to you, Dr. J. But we talked about this prior, was trading 560, came out, hit the cover off the ball, home run, and now we are seeing, there's a great correlation there, which I kind of have been talking about a couple people on Twitter, it's a correlation to Apple and the oil market, because a lot of people were fading China, this hard lane in China, we've talked about this, but analysts were not looking in the Apple for that growth, the sale of iPhones, so they had a tremendous amount of expansion in China. Therefore, maybe the growth in China is actually there. Therefore, the oil demand is coming in right now. We're seeing $105 print in the crude oil. So are shorts on the run, or is there real demand coming out of China? What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, there's just, this whole Apple thing that's going on, it's kind of it's crazy. It's the new VIX, right? It, it it's is, truly the barometer it, it of really, America. It is really the truly the barometer of America. But the, you know, one thing I have a problem with that is, is everybody's going out and buying an iPhone, but they're probably not buying something else. Because there's just, mm -hmm. you know, the employment's not there. People aren't just spending wildly other than on Apple products. But can China seeing, can China keep those numbers up and therefore I, I don't the know. I don't know if I don't know if Apple can like really pull us out of this 
this global uh, rut that we're in. Well, it but it certainly looks like it with these numbers coming out of China. I mean, they can't sell right, a house, but, this but is everybody's great, folks. buying. This is great because honestly, think what would Ben Bernanke have done, said or not said in the event Apple missed earnings missed and earnings, boom, right. hit five hundred dollars. I think honestly, the Fed is looking at Apple just as they are looking at a jobless claim numbers, folks. It's it's crazy the weight that Apple brings to the market. But if you're trading grains here, if you're trading bonds, euro dollar strips, if you're just scalping crude, you have to be aware yep. of Apple and the other earnings in the market. There's a lot to take in here, folks. It pulls in the whole curve. Yeah, and I hope we shed a little bit of light here on the market for you. But one thing from the floor of the CME group, be the hammer. Nothing here. And take that. Take that. Oh, <laughs> two weak <laughs> ones. <laughs>